Hi boys and girls, welcome back to the Parsha Studio. This week's Parsha starts with the mitzvah of Bikurim, the first fruits. In honor of that, we will decorate fondant with a grape and pomegranate design. Here are the supplies and ingredients we will need. A small, plain cake of your choice, a rolling pin and plastic knife, purple, green, and red food coloring, white fondant, and parchment paper. Let's begin. Soften a large piece of white fondant with your hands. This activity is supposed to remind us of the mitzvah of Bikurim. But hey, have you ever brought your first fruits up to your local shul? That sounds pretty silly, doesn't it? Alrighty, roll out the fondant on a piece of parchment paper until it becomes large enough to cover the cake on all sides. Well, you're right, it is a silly thing to do because unfortunately we aren't able to do this mitzvah nowadays the reason being that we have no Beis HaMikdash. Bikurim were only brought from when the Jewish people entered the land of Israel up until the destruction of the second Beis HaMikdash. But I have good news for you. There is something super important we can do nowadays that is like Bikurim. Okay, lay the fondant over the cake and pat down the flat sides so they are snug against it. Then cut off the extra fondant hanging at the corners. Pinch together the open parts and do your best to smooth them out with your fingers. Then trim off any fondant sticking off the cake at the bottom. Are you ready to go back in time? Do you know what the Jewish people used to do all those years ago when they brought up their first fruits? Imagine farmers from all over the land flooding the roads to the Beis HaMikdash with their full baskets of fruit, the sound of a flute accompanying them. They are joyful and ready to give their Bikurim to the Kohanim as tokens of thanksgiving to Hashem. As each farmer approaches, he holds the edges of the basket while the coin holds it from below and waves it in every direction. Back to business here for a moment. Divide the leftover fondant that you cut off into three balls. Add food coloring to each ball and mix each one until the color is even. Are you in suspense? Here's what happens next. The farmer recites a passage of thanksgiving to Hashem, then places the basket next to the mezbeach to be distributed to the kahanim on duty at that time. How special would it be if we could do that now in our times? Using purple fondant, roll several tiny balls, smash each ball onto the top of the cake to form a cluster of grapes in the top left corner of the cake as shown. We can't exactly bring real physical bikurim nowadays, but here's what we can do. We can remember to express thanks both to Hashem and to any person who helps us. When feeling gratitude, you might think it in your head, but the mitzvah of bikurim teaches us to verbalize it and to do so with joy and intention. The farmers who brought Bikurim put an extra effort to beautify their gifts, traveled to the base of Mikdash with songs on their lips, and verbally recited a passage of thanks to Hashem. Next, use green fondant to create two leaves and a stem. Roll it into a ball, flatten it, and cut out the leaves and stem using a plastic knife. Then place them on the cake above the grapes. Just as the Bikurim were accompanied by a verbal recitation and brought with fanfare, we too can make sure to express our thanks and put thought into the way we do so. For example, when it comes to thanking Hashem, you can think about your words when you daven, or at any time say thank you to Hashem in your own words. Or when it comes to thanking a person, you can smile, look at them in the eye, and specify what you are grateful for. If it's appropriate, you can even give the person a gift with a nice note. What are some words you can use to show Hashem your gratitude for all that He gives you? Separate a piece of red fondant, roll it into a ball, and flatten it into a circle. Use a plastic knife to cut out a quarter of it, forming a partial pomegranate that is three quarters of a circle. And how about when it comes to thanking another person? What can you say or do to show that you're grateful? Place the pomegranate at the bottom right corner of the cake. Roll a small piece of white fondant into a thin rope. Then place it on the edge of the cutout part of the pomegranate. Then roll some tiny red balls and flatten them into the space inside and beyond the pomegranate. Fill most of the remaining space with several red and purple balls, pomegranate seeds, and grapes. Flatten them and place them on the cake as shown. By the way, do you know why we chose to decorate our cake with grapes and pomegranate? It wasn't random. These fruits are two of the Shiva Saminim, the seven special types of produce that the land of Israel is known for. The other five are wheat, barley, figs, olives, and dates. The Jewish people were obligated to bring Bikurim, their first fruits, only from these seven types. 
Create three red leaf-like shapes for the pomegranate crown and place them in the middle of the pomegranate so that each one is raised slightly off the surface. Ta-da! Your Bikurim cake is ready. Enjoy and remember to say a bracha. Please like and subscribe and we hope to see you back again next week. Bye!